Ooh, welcome back to Wednesday Trade Targets video. And we look at the list of the 10 most traded players on the Fantasy Calc website, which pulls from actual fantasy leagues. And number one on there is Tony Pollard. I just want to know who the fuck is trading for Tony Pollard. If 5% of trades include Tony it's Pollard out there. being sold to somebody, I need to know who are the 5% of people buying him. Present yourselves in the comments. If one single person has bought Tony Pollard in the last week, let us know what you gave for him. You're a fucking idiot. It's got to be potato chips. Like It's got to be Zach Moss at this yeah. point. <laughs> but in the same tier. They probably traded for Rico Dowdle. They just know he's an upgrade. That'd be a nice flip, to be honest yeah. with you. That'd be such a savvy investment if that worked <laughs> out. Um, normally, we would go down the 10 most traded players, but we've started to see a theme where most of these guys are the same guys every single week. There are a couple players, I think, that have maybe been on and off or new to the list this week, so we'll go through those guys. But other than that, we're going to throw some darts at the chart and pick some random players that we think uh, are worth talking about. I have a couple guys in my mind, just you know, relatively speaking, that I think are worth having a discussion about we're going to skip Tony Pollard. We're going to move to Kyler Murray. He's actually, I think, the first quarterback that we've spoke about on this list. First so, and last? We'll first see. and definitely. I don't I don't see anyone else coming back or, or doing anything. I'm surprised Dobbs hasn't hopped on. Unless yet. Aaron Rodgers. Max. All right, so Kyler Murray. Why don't, why don't we speak about this from, like, a super flex angle? Two quarterbacks. So more of, like, do you want to buy Kyler or not? Because obviously the easy, the easy road out here is just like, oh, he's a one quarterback. He has no value kind of thing. I might change my answer, man. He's valued at QB 10 right now in fantasy calc. I think one more good performance, and he probably spikes up that chart. I think I got a hot take. I got hold slash sell. Okay. Por qué? Por qué, mami? I feel like it's just that's the thing. Like one game, and he's going to go to the moon. To like He's like QB 5 value. You know? I think he's great. I'm not hating on him. I just think you could flip him for a little bit of a premium right now. I'm not fading Kyler. I still think he's a great play, whether you're keeping him, selling him, buying him. But I think there's going to be better value out there. Like, I think you could flip Kyler for Tua right now. I think someone would buy in on that. And I think I would still want Tua the rest of the way. Interesting. That's exactly where my mind went, Tua for Kyler. And we've kind of talked about we don't love talking about one-for-ones. No, I think that's I think that's kind of interesting. Kyler feels like he's in his own category right now because mm -hmm. there's so much uncertainty around him. I have a buy for him because I had a feeling he was going to come back and play really well. He had been a full participant of practice for a few weeks now. I think they were just waiting for the right game. He could have had a much bigger game, right? He brought for Clayton sure. Tune in on the one-yard line, which basically stole a touch, another rushing touchdown from him. He already had a rushing touchdown plus like 35 yards on the ground. Didn't seem like he was limited at all running the ball, which is huge for Kyler, obviously. This is a, a really underratedly good group of weapons he has right now. Right between McBride, Hollywood. I still really like Michael Wilson. I think he's going to be a good player for him. James Conner. I'm it, excited for the future of the team, for sure. It's a solid group they have around him right now. He However, also missed Hollywood on that, yeah, like, that finger catch, been. too. He was a couple inches away from like a massive game. Mm -hmm. I will say the Falcons' like pass rush is abysmal, so they put no pressure on Kyler. So he probably looked a little bit better than he should have. In I believe they play Baltimore this upcoming week. Is it Cleveland or Baltimore? I think it's Houston. It might be Houston. I don't know. It might be Cleveland. I'm just thinking about GOAT teams Baltimore right now. Baltimore plays the Bengals on Thursday. Facts. Facts, <laughs> facts, 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 facts. And Cleveland plays the Steelers. Okay. <laughs> More factoids being thrown at me. So Kyler plays Houston. Uh, I mean, their pass rush is fine. So yeah. I think it's a little bit more challenging than the Atlanta defense. As much as I like their weapons and like their future, I still think this is a bad team. And that's also why I don't want to be fully invested in them. That's fair. You could argue it's like, well, they're always going to be trailing. They'll always need to kind of be a high scoring offense. But I just think there's better options out there for better value. Rest of season from week 11 to week 17 when the fantasy season ends, is he a top 12 quarterback? Probably. Okay. That, I think, is, itself uh, is big. It'd be hard to argue against that. Because I think there was a lot of skepticism coming in. All right, Kyler, you know, hopefully he's like your QB2 in Superflex. Hopefully he mm -hmm. finishes like a top 16 guy. And now you feel confident saying that he's probably a QB1. Yeah, for sure. And back to like how I said the two thing, I think you, you could sell Kyler for like Jared Goff and a piece with him. You might be, you like might that. need that extra piece. I like that. You go from a, to a fringe QB1, arguably, but the name value is just really there for Kyler and the play style that you might be able to get an extra juice out of him right now. That's fair. All right, Devontae's number three. We'll move past him. We've talked about it every week. I think Saquon's probably someone that we can hit a little bit. Yeah. They have him valued at RB10 right now. And the way they do these values is they pull the API from sleeper leagues, et cetera, where they're calculating <clears throat> different trades that you guys make. This is all market value. So 
they build some sort of data algorithms that basically pull exactly how you guys are valuing them via trades, via all these different types of things, like where they're put into trades, who else is being traded alongside with them, et cetera. So these values are probably as close to the real values as you're going to find. So Saquon as the RB10. Um, it's a tough one. It is. Because they're, they're not like... Well, we'll get into it in a minute, but they're not giving some high price. Yeah, they're not. I'm still going to go to sell. Said, I'm still getting rid of his ass. Th that's like, that's like, a, <laughs> this is like an energy sell. You can't possibly go into buy him. No. It's tough though, because they're going to give him like 30 touches a game, but the they're offense so is so bad. inept. They have yeah. the worst graded run blocking, to P, uh, according to PFF. I want to say the schedule is not great. I think on Christmas, which is probably week 17. It's a playoff. Probably 16. It's a playoff yeah. week. They play the Eagles. I'm good. That's tough. I'm out. That's I might what be I mean. going to that game, actually. If they... Uh, you are? I might, yeah. Is it in Philly? We, got, we have work that day. We got work to do. <laughs> the game. Mm -hmm. Saquon, yeah. I mean, the situation can't get any worse. Maybe in good like, matchups, he could play this well. This is one but. where I was like, I wish... And this is so stupid again, too. Like, I wish the Giants signed, like, a Wentz. Not just, like, we're going to see what Tommy DeVito could do. Let's get some extra juice in the building. But well, now this this team's defeated. They might end up with the first pick, legitimately. Yeah. They're they're unwatchable. And that's a good point you brought up with the offensive line because that was that was something that Giants fans were hopeful would take a big step up this year. You have Evan Neal, you have Andrew Thomas, like taking a step forward. They've done the fucking opposite. Mm, the They've sunk so team. much draft capital into that O line, top ten picks year over year, and it's been a tragedy. Yeah, I mean, you can even just tell with them selling Leonard Williams at the trade deadline. Like, I don't think this team's in the mindset to compete. And maybe they just wanted to give value out of Williams. He's expensive. They got a second round pick. That that is good value. And they weren't going to be in the playoffs either way. But clearly, this Giants team as a whole is just sellers rather than yeah, investors. They, and I think you probably have some. All right, so they play at Washington this upcoming week, which could probably be a decent sell or a sell opportunity afterwards. They get New England, then they still have their buy. Green Bay is a, uh, a shitty run defense actually, but then they're for the playoffs. They have on the road against the Saints, on the road against Philadelphia. And then they're home against the Rams. But either way, like... Those that, are all pretty good. Like, the Rams' best part of their defense probably is their run defense. Yeah, with Aaron Donald up the middle. So, not not a great, like, fantasy playoff no. schedule uh, matchup Like, look there. at what Dallas was doing to the Giants. The Philly's just right up there with Dallas. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah. Especially if fucking DeVito's still starting there. Yeah, I mean, regardless of Matt Barkley, DeVito, whoever. Yeah, I think Unless we Unless Tyrod's back by then. Could be. That, that could actually... You're right. I didn't think Still about that. Still not something I want to bank on. Yeah, I don't want to bank on it. That would give me a little bit of hope, though. Tyrod's, mm -hmm. like, serviceable enough that the offensive pieces around him can... Fun he actually played, like, really well yeah. when he was playing QB for them. Um, Bijan, Calvin Ridley, we've talked about kind of ad nauseum. Calvin Ridley, I'm done. We're done. I, I, I can't. There's like, just, I don't can't. think you could start him at all. Like, no, you have to be... You got to be down tremendous. <laughs> he's so unserious about football. I'm telling you, he's gambling again. It's That's so it. bad, He's at, back on the apps. ESPN bet just launched. He's fucking finished. Oh, it's over. He is finished. Getting that sign up bonus. <laughs> use Calvin, use promo code BDG, please. Uh, Devante, we've talked about a ton. Derek uh, Henry. We could talk about what's he at? RB8? RB8. A little torn. I'm not going to um, lie. I know where I want to go with, with D Hizzle. A hold slash buy. He's a buy for me. Henry's coming off of this 11 for 24 game, one for negative four not good. through the air. So that's a game where you want to buy afterwards. Because prior to that, 17 for 75 and a touchdown on the ground, 3 for 27 through the air. The game before that against Atlanta, 125 total yards. The game before that, 115 total yards and a touchdown. It was red hot prior to this, um, this game over the weekend. And I think people are are st are going to get worried about Derrick Henry now with Will Levis. Can Will Levis like carry this offense? I was going to say, do you think Will plays the rest of the year? Yeah, I think they play him out. Mm -hmm. I think he showed, showed enough through his first two starts. That like one bad start should not get him benched again. I don't know if I feel like super confident in that take, to be honest, but I think he should. I think it's what we all want. Yeah. I brought this up before. In the way the Texans are looking, they are just simply not the same old Texans. However, Henry plays them twice in the fantasy playoffs, week 15, week 17, past five games. He's averaging 200 yards on the Texans in his past five games. Again, Derrick Henry's a year older those five games from now. The Texans are a completely different team. We haven't really something. seen any of those games from Henry yet, or any of those, like, runs where Correct. it's a 60 yard, 70 yard touchdown from Henry, and maybe those aren't part of his game anymore. But you'd be hard pressed to find an easier schedule going forward. They yeah. play at Jacksonville this week, but then it's Carolina, Indy, Miami, Houston, Seattle, Houston. There's not, like, an actual scary that. defense, really. He could still play bully ball. Right. All you need is, like, 
game script to be mm-hmm. somewhat close in the favor of Tennessee. They have to be within a touchdown. They weren't this previous weekend. They lost 20-6 to six to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's a good run defense I, as well. I think we've seen now, like, both sides of the pendulum. Versus week one versus who do they have four touchdowns against? This, oh, Will Levis? Yeah. Uh, Atlanta. That was when everything was going right. Last week, everything went wrong. What we need is against the Steelers. It's like a competitive game. They, he had that last week. Played at Pittsburgh. He went for 115 yeah, total yards and a touchdown. We don't need Will Levis' debut or the most recent one. Oh, we, we need the one in the middle. Mm-hmm. where the, the Titans are just competing. They're in the game, and they can play the way they want to at a controlled pace. Yeah. I mean, more often than not, I'm looking at Derrick Henry's numbers. Like he is, He's put up like really solid fantasy days. So in half PPR, he's, he's pretty much living between like 15 and 20 points. But he's had a couple games of like two points yeah. and seven points. Points, which is on Derrick Henry like and if you look at last year's numbers he has games of like 35 26 whatever and you're not getting those either so what you're getting is almost like a um almost like a better version of like Najee Harris right I, now. I think that was the thing coming into the year you either believe Derrick Henry is the same guy or he's falling off a cliff when it's like he could give you 1100 yards eight touchdowns on the year yeah and you'll take that yeah that's, that's, I think that's, that's about like. where he's gonna finish where he was still worth a great pick. He still got value out of him. He just doesn't have the ceiling, but the floor, it's still pretty solid. Next up, we got Raheem Moser and Chris Olave, two guys we've talked about at a crazy length. So we're going to skip through them. We're going to move to the fucking dart period of this. All right, another running back I want to talk about, though, is Brees Hall. Okay. Brees. He's the only one I'm just going to give a, a hard hold on. I think I'd, I'm getting rid of him. Really? Yeah. It, it, and exactly what you just said. He's not scoring touchdowns. The Jets just don't move the ball to where I want to be invested in him. It's hard to ever see a game where he's going to be able to get 20 carries. The schedule the rest of the way is not the prettiest. Those uh, games, he, they have to go so far out of their way to give Brees Hall 20 carries. Yeah. They, and they should, but. He does get good receiving work, but again, if you're not scoring, there's always going to be a ceiling on you, but I still feel like people are so in love with him you're going to get good value out of him because of his name. It fucked me up, I think, or it's fucking a lot of fantasy people probably up, is like those first couple of games he was back, he kept exploding through the line mm-hmm. and, and ripping off like 50, 60, 70 yard plays. And that became... And that could it, still happen. But, but it was like, it, it made me rely think, on it. It made me think of like Adrian Peterson in his season back from the ACL when he ran for like 2,000 yards. Yeah. Every single game. It, he had a run of 50, 60 plus yards every single game. And I was like, okay, maybe Brees is right there. You know, like maybe he's just going to do that every game. It's just not realistic, you know, and it's not. Ha- and the games that doesn't happen, he ends up with like 60 yards, doesn't score a lot of touchdowns. So I get it for me at, at this point. It's kind of just like I'm going to keep putting him into my lineup because on the off chance that he breaks away that big play on the off chance that they decide to run their offense through him. Cool. Have him in my lineup. Do you think you could like this is a risky play, but do you think you could go get like a chan for Brees? I yeah. think you easily could. Yeah. I think that's a move you can make. And that's a risk tolerance play for whoever's watching, but that's like a swing you can make and mm. really cash in on if things fall your way. You do that? Again, that's risk tolerance. How risky are you? Oh, I think I would go for it. It's scary because A-Chan could be the same guy, but he's a smaller dude. He's still always going to linger a little bit of in, uh, injury risk. But Can I give you A-Chan's playoff schedule? I'm trying to guess it, but yeah, go ahead. You want to? That'd be a ridiculous guess. <laughs> how, how would you guess that? I, was, I feel like I might you just know it. it. You yeah. might know it. Um, okay. In week 15, they play the Jets. In week 16, they play Dallas. In week 17, they play at Baltimore. You might want to keep Brees Hall. That's a really That is tough. brutal. I don't Holy know. Sh- does the schedule matter for HN, though? I don't know if it does. He might just be one of them dudes. Still, that's one of the few schedules. I'm like, holy yeah, shit. It, that's bad. It's not great. Take back everything. They have a nice little lead up. Actually, I get their buy. They're coming off their buy. They got the Raiders, which is awesome. But you got to think that's that maybe is like an easing game exactly. for HN. Then they're at New York, at Washington, which is good. Tennessee's relatively tough run defense, and then they move into that playoff schedule. So that's I think HN will probably be fine. That might be more difficult for like Raheem Mostert. That might say more about him. Do you think you could buy Brees Hall for Derrick Henry or sell Brees Hall for Derrick Henry? I have Henry. Yeah, I would take Henry too. I'm, but that's uh, I'm assuming that's probably a popular opinion. One guy I want to bring up was Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown's a dude that I su- I really want to buy right now. Yeah. On the back of Kyler looking good, on the back of missing that touchdown by like an inch, on the back of looking at last year, what he did with Kyler and no D 
DeAndre Hopkins. If you remember Marquise Brown's like tar- oh, I was looking at the totals, splits. He cooks. He he was averaging like eleven targets a game mm-hmm. with Kyler last year when DeAndre Hopkins. Now it's a little bit of a different offense because we saw like Trey McBride just got like thirteen targets, which is fucking awesome. But Hollywood's a dude that I feel like I haven't given enough credit to this well, season. Yeah, that's the good thing. Like he's been producing as a flex play all year long. Now it's like he just upgraded at QB. He could still be a flex play at bare minimum. Like yeah, he legit has top. 18 wide receiver potential. Oh, uh, yeah. He, I mean, look back at last year, the first six weeks. So he had six targets in week one, four for 43 and a touchdown, six targets. But after that, 11 targets, 17 targets, 11 targets, nine targets, misses a bunch of time, eight, 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 eight whatever with Kyler. Like it was consistently mm. some of the leading target getting in the NFL. And I feel like people probably forgot about that. And now that I feel confident enough that Kyler's going to get back into his groove. Hollywood is like a screaming bye to me. I also thought James Conner looked fucking fantastic. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned earlier, if he hit that touchdown, everyone would be hanging on to Hollywood and not let him go. But since you missed yeah. it, this is your chance to go and get him. Yeah, he's a beast. Um, what about the Detroit running backs? You have Jameer Gibbs went crazy. I almost feel like David Montgomery might be, it might be time to buy. I was going to say Gibbs is like averaging 27 in his last three games. I'm talking full PPR. I'm not selling him, but like... No, but it's like, I don't know if you could bank on that every single week. That's... I think Monty had a good game, and he. I truly think he was still kind of eased into this one. Box score doesn't say wise, but I don't think he was fully getting his usage. The like snaps, that. I could care less about how they split that first yeah. game because he's going to get eased back in. I also saw somewhere, I heard in a podcast and then saw on Twitter, that like I think the first goal line touch that Jameer Gibbs ran in he basically led the Lions down the field. First of all, they were switch, They were actually switching off series. So they split mm-hmm. series. Okay. So David Montgomery's 75-yard touchdown run obviously eliminates probably like 12 snaps that he would have had in the box score. When Gibbs led the team down the field, when they got to wherever he ran it in from, the 4-3-2, whatever, he was coming off the field, and Montgomery was like, no, I'll go back out there. You let him down the field, take the touchdown. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure how true that was, but it would it would have been weird for this person to make it up. I just mm-hmm. didn't see it. If that were the case, then everyone's like, "Oh, Demont's got the goal line roll again." Demont scored think two he touchdowns. Does have it, yeah. I think he does too. I don't think what happened in this game is actually predictive of what's going on going forward. They've been super clear that Demont's a huge part of this fucking offense, and this offense know, is rolling. I don't know too. how many offenses are better. It's like kind of like how we've always been saying in the past episodes when T Higgins is still on there. You're like, you want to be invested in this offense. The Lions is that at this point. Like. Get any piece you can, whether that's Amon Ross, Sam Laporta, Monty Gibbs. If one of them are on a decent price tag right now, pay the price for it. You know I mean? We're talking about like just the sheer number of rushing touchdowns that this team has had over the last two years. Yeah. It's not fluky. It's just like w- the way that they're set up at this point. And this is like without them, I really, I think without them really hitting the full potential of which they wanted. They still wanted Jamison Williams to be that guy to spread the field even more. And, you know, I'm getting... A little theoretical saying they could be better than what they even are, but I, I think they did have bigger plans even. They're sixth in the offense in scoring right now. 26.8 points per game. They're fifth in rushing attempts per game. Would you... I might still go Brees on this one. Would you go Brees over Monty? That's tight. Dude, to be honest with you, I think this is one that you just don't overthink. I think I would take Monty here. Really? Yeah. I just think the scoring opportunities and just the amount he's used overall. I actually, as weird as that feels... Monty feels very secure. You're definitely getting a better floor. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. But, like, who's to say that his ceiling is not two, three touchdowns a game? Yeah, it's just the way Gibbs has looked. Like, I, I truly think we do have a 50-50 backfield, and that's enough to keep and want to have and buy. But it, I don't know. I think there's a threshold that that would break where Brees Hall is a little tempted for me. Either way. It, it's a good conversation. Yeah. I, I feel like. I'm, I mean, David Montgomery has done nothing but just dominate every time he's been on the field this year. You know? Cooked. Yeah. What would you do coming off a huge game? Would you sell Brian Robinson? I feel like he's someone I just want to hold, mm-hmm. but being the RB five on the year, do you, I don't. I think his name value prevents him from having such high value. I don't think he has big name values. My point. There's yeah. Tax to it. I don't. I don't think he's. I don't know where he's valued in this, but I'd assume he's probably closer to like twelve to fifteen, maybe in that range. Mm-hmm. But uh, you, not to keep bringing up the one for ones, in, but you could probably flip a Brian Robinson for a Monty right now immediately. That I would make that trade in a second. And I think that's very feasible. Mm. Monty is still coming off of a big game, but for your fantasy people who might be worried that are deeper and might be worried about his usage, yeah, I, I, mean, I think I, you could talk someone into that. There's part of me, Brian Robinson's coming off a huge game, mostly on the back of like two giant receptions. I do wonder though, is Washington just the... I will say that it feels like Brian Robinson's big play reliant, but he gets them. 
it doesn't matter whether or not it's luck. It happens. He's kind of, he's like their goal line back too, but they don't really have. It's weird because like all their scores, it feels like are like deep scores now. Yeah. They kind of feel like, I don't know, maybe like the Rams of the beginning of the year where it's like their mm-hmm. defense is so bad now that like... That's a good comparison. If they want to stay in games, they have to score 30 fucking points a game or yeah, something like Howell, that. Because Howell like leads in passing yards. Yeah, Howell's kind of the GOAT, dude. Dude, <laughs> he's their guy. Howell's a fantasy GOAT. <laughs> I have him in so many of my dynasty leagues. I'm so happy. Um, yeah, B-Rob. B-Rob's a guy that... I, I actually have a decent decent amount of B-Rob too. i kind of just been throwing in my lineup and been like, cool, sometimes he'll get me seven. He's someone like I've He's been... He's a sneaky high ceiling though appreciative of and i'm like i've gotten every freaking squeeze out of him but it's like could i now flip him i i feel like i want to be loyal to him almost like he's been a great asset but he's a guy i, I would have no problem letting him go i'd, yeah. I, I'd let him rip if, if uh if, if i got an offer that kind of enticed me i, I don't know if, if i'm thinking of uh other positions or something like that michael Pittman comes to mind like i like Pittman a lot i think mm. I think he probably has a little bit more name value, but realistically, I think Brian Robinson's probably been better than Michael Pittman, but that's like a fair trade, I feel like, value yeah. for value kind of thing. That's just if you need a position. Mm-hmm. Um, what about the Steelers? Just the offense in general. You have Deontay, you have Pickens, Najee Harris, and Jalen Warren. Any interest in anyone there? I still think I'm getting rid of Najee. He has been pretty consistent. He's been scoring. He's been getting you about 15 points, but that's the thing. That's his ceiling. It's bad. I do think the moment he gets that three point flop again, you're going to be like, I should have sold him when I could have. Yeah. I want to cut this motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you for holding on. It's nice to be caught in the moment, but don't. Yeah. I was talking about this on the stream yesterday. I do feel like the Steelers O line could be one of those that over the second half of the year ends up being when we look back on it and we're like, wow, they made big improvements because they made. A lot of flashes in free agency and the offensive line in, in the draft, et cetera. I, I could see us looking back and being like, okay, they were really bad. They got better over the course of the year. Because a lot of times that's what O-lines or good coaches do to teams, right? Like they just get better progressively because they know how to use the right pieces in the right places. So I, I, I could see the run game kind of coming together. There was a report that came out today that was like Jalen Warren was named the starter. I don't really know what that means in terms of like touch counts. Mm-hmm. Does that mean he gets a first snap and then comes off the fucking field? I don't I, It feels like but it's just hard for me to pull the trigger on buying him because like I don't trust the Steelers to give him the work like he deserves. No, I, I like... It's not that I don't believe in him. I don't believe in the team letting him cook. He could start the next seven games for the Steelers, and I feel like he won't actually make a difference in his production. Yeah. It'll still end up being a 50-50 split. Exactly. I'm excited. I have Warren in one of my... In the in the Bash League, which is full PPR, and I've been mm. a little bit... I have, like, Aaron Jones, James Cook, who are, like, cool. What was nice, though, this was his first big game on the ground. Mm-hmm. That, that was a difference maker. They're finally seeing, like, we have we yeah. have a Austin Eckler in our fucking <laughs> yes. hands. Like, let him rip for a little while. So I'm excited to get him into my lineup this week as a flex play, full PPR. Like, that's something I'm very excited about. Deontay Johnson is a guy that I think I would actually buy as well. I was just going to bring him up. Because yeah. he's coming off a bad game, but typically he's the guy who gets 11 fucking targets in this yeah. offense. The uh, volume's there. I, I do think that might be his one of two touchdowns on the year that we saw two weeks ago, but the volume's there, and that, and that's what matters. Pickens, he did play. He got three, four targets, which is... Come on, you can't, you can't but, buy Pickens. No, 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 but I'm saying, like, that's you, why you want you Deontay. You want to buy Pickens. It makes me sick. <laughs> Makes me George sick. Cannot Sickens. wait to flip B Rob. <laughs> Pickens just can't get work while Deontay Johnson's on the field. Pat Firemuth is probably coming back either this week or next week as well. I think I'm a pass on that. No, I don't want him, but he 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 played the first. So I was looking at his numbers today because I was doing the waiver wire video. So he played the first four games and he scored twice in the first four games, but his yardage totals it's like fourteen total. Something no, no, no. Horrible. Oh yeah. Well, he had one game of like forty. The other three games were like. Seven, three, and two. Yeah. It was incredible. Like in the bad. first four weeks of the season when it was like Kenny Pickett is gonna ruin that franchise. Oh yeah. It's they need Sam Howell. They need a Sam Howell in the building. Someone that just lets it rip. Josh Dobbs. Facts. Didn't they have Josh Dobbs? They, I think that's where he started. Idiot. He would be so good for them right <laughs> He'd now. Be so nice. <laughs> Dude, that would be low key a nice offense if they had Dobby. The Dobinator. Uh, they're gonna hang on to him for too long, I'm telling you. Pil- Pickett? Pil- Oh, yeah. yeah. Pittsburgh's too slow with their decision making. Mm, You see with the Matt Canada thing, people have hated him forever. Now it's like, instead of firing him, he's on the side. They're going to extend Canada and pick it like together. (laughs) That that shit always happens where guys get extended together for absolutely no reason. All right. Well, we're done yapping. So, JMO, take us away. All right. That's week 11 (laughs) trade targets. Week 12. Let us know what players you want to see because we're tired of talking about the same 10. Like, give us a sub, give us some love. What if they all said Calvin Ridley? (laughs) talk about them fantasy Zaire football Harrell. oh next week we actually we're not going to talk about playoff schedules specifically probably so ignore all that we don't care what you're going to say we're going <laughs> to give you the best advice there is on the playoff matchups who to trade for who to get rid of including Brees hall including devon a chan on that schedule peace <laughs>